and then you take the next step. Right? I know it sounds really like, uh, duh, but people forget that. And there is a little catch here as well, okay, that it's not just about taking the next step. It's about when you take the next step, what you do with that next step. Ooh, what happened there? So again, like with the mountain, it seems daunting at the start, but once you put one foot in front of the other, in front of the other, you kind of get there. I just want to bring you very close, uh, very quickly through, this was how Facebook looked like. Does anyone remember this? It was called The Facebook. I have no idea what Al Pacino's Facebook was the logo. Someone please explain that. Okay, but the point of this is that um, Mark Zuckerberg, when he started The Facebook, he had no idea what he was doing either. Right? He just thought, let's just do this thing um, to help people connect. And he said if he waited to see if he knew what the formula was, the Facebook or Facebook as we know it today would never have been born. And if you can see Facebook from even as recent as five years ago, it looks totally different. Because what they've done is they started it and they keep changing. So there's a whole team that goes trying to make improvements as they go and then they roll out a whole round of changes every so often. Right? Which is kind of the model that I feel works best in life as well. Oh my gosh, this is embarrassing clip. But I'm going to share this because we're all friends. I was like, should I put this up? But since everyone has been so friendly, the year was 2008. I was a young 25-year-old, meaning it was just last year. And all of the pressure rests on the shoulders of current world champions Wang Feng and Tin Kai. Uh, <laughs> it was... That was not the reaction my bosses had though. They, they were not amused at all, right? So they were not amused. The uh, fact that it was uh, quite a hoo-ha, right? And it wasn't the best um, handle, I have to say. Um, but the fact is, it was a small setback. I did get put into cold storage, which is um, the local station's term for, now we call it cancelled. In 2008, there was no such word as cancelled, right? So I was kind of cancelled, um, but like a cockroach, I came back, I'm still here. I still did many years of TV, some years of radio, and I guess the point is one setback doesn't make you a failure. So back to the step theory, right? So after you take the first step, you take the second step, and you take the third step. Sometimes you fall off the stage, right? Which has also happened in my career. Um, and then you just get back on the stage and you try again. I mean, honestly, that's all there is to it. So you just keep going and keep going and you keep improving. This is 2013, so I had just, um, I was still in, in TV and radio, and I decided that there was this thing called YouTube. It was quite new-ish at that point. Like not a lot of people were putting stuff out then. And I was like, what if I put up my own content and started making money off it? I think there were a few people who were starting to do that. But I was like, I need to build it first, like a magazine. That was how I thought, right? So this was the first piece of content that I put out. I'm not gonna play it because uh, in the interest of time, but if you see the set and everything else, we spent a lot of time on the set, right? It took ages to make it look artfully, effortless. A lot of effort actually. And then the lighting also, so that you look extra pretty, but actually also a lot of work, right? And this took ages to produce. And then my editors like took some time to edit it and everything else. And it got a decent amount of views, like 13K, but also because at that time, the landscape was not so saturated, which is another small point on early mover advantage. If you just take the first step first, right? You don't know where it's gonna go, but you just try. So one month later, I told my, um, my team, I was like, hey guys, this is not sustainable. Right, the amount of money and time we're putting into this and we weren't making money yet. I said we need to find a quicker way to get subscribers, to get views. So we brainstormed and then someone was like, actually right, don't know who you're talking about school uniforms. And my partner then, he was an ex-Raffles boy, he said, let's, let's go and see whether, let's pit Raffles against ACS. I was like, okay, how? And then I was like, you know what, let's just go and interview them. So I borrowed my cousin's school uniform and then I just stood outside ACS. And I was like, hey, what, uh, what is your favorite girls' school uniform? And that was this video. And the number of views I got on this, I remember I was in New York at the time, and people were calling me, because at that time the word viral video was still a thing. Like, oh my gosh, Jay, your video went viral. I'm like, what, which, what video? I think it was one of my pretty videos, right? She's like, no, the nonsense one where you went to interview the boys. And someone, people would text me like, wow, you terrorize boys also can get so many views, which is kind of true. But the whole point I'm trying to make with this also is, if I didn't start with the TV approach to YouTube and slowly took it along the way, you'll never know what actually works. Right? So you kind of have to try and fail and try again and figure it out as you go. So today, of course, happily, I do um, have an income stream, stream from both YouTube as well as Instagram. 
and I've managed to make content creation part of my life and part of my career as well, but it would never have happened if I didn't start this in 2013. And then the pandemic happened, right? So it, was, it felt kind of weird to be shooting fashion videos during the pandemic, right? to be wearing nice dresses and like, oh, this is how you pair this shoe with this skirt. It was a weird thing. And I was also very, as a very extreme extrovert at home, I was like, what do I do with myself? All right, so what I did was I switched on TikTok and I just went live. You know, I had no idea what I was going to talk about. I just said, you can ask me anything. And people just jumped in and started watching. And then I did it on Instagram Live. They also came out of Instagram Live. And uh, uh, my ex staff, she <laughs> summed it up best because I hadn't seen her in a while at that point. And then she was like, oh, I really like this live format because we can just stay at home and chill while you talk. And we can talk if we want to. We can engage if we want to as an introvert. I was like, oh, that's so interesting. I felt like I was onto something, right? And then after that, I started doing um, positive psychology workshops online during the pandemic. And then I started, clients started calling me and saying, hey, can you host our Chinese New Year virtual lunch? I'm like, oh, okay. Right, and then so I started doing that. And then my first live stream selling job was from the North Face. So I always remember, because um, I got a call and this person was like, oh, you know, every year the North Face does this huge warehouse clearance sale. But we can't do it now because of the pandemic. Would you like to host it? I'm like, huh, host a sale? That seemed a very odd and strange and alien concept to me. I'm like, what do I have to do? They're like, you just talk through the clothes. I'm like, you know, I've never done it before. I was like, sure. All right, so then I did it. It was honestly, the first idea was awkward AF. I was like, um, so this jacket keeps you warm when you are climbing. It's like rainproof up to, I mean, it was so weird, right? And they had one of their staff come on and they had no idea what they were doing either. But I think the both of us were aligned in that we both decided to just try it. What's the worst that could happen? Right, and then from there, I realized there was such a demand and I went on to start my own live streaming company. I just got back three days ago, actually from Italy. So um, now I sell like artisanal Italian bags, artisanal handmade French jewelry from Paris, from bags from Italy, and I sell clothes from Korea. Uh, by the way, shameless plug, if you guys want to shop, please do follow Kaki Kaki Live on Facebook. Thank you. I, I, I mean, but it's been, it's been such a journey, right? And it's been really such a trip, and I've made a lot of friends. It's been a good source of income. It's really because I took the next step and the next step, and I really, honestly, there was no plan. I just kind of figured it out along the way. And right? so my, I encourage you to, if you're thinking about doing something, anything, just take the first step, try, if it fails, don't stop there, just go on. You know, another note about live streaming, which a lot of people ask me, how do I get started? How do I keep going? We'll get into a little bit more on that um, in just a bit, but I think the one thing that a lot of people don't realize is it really is about doing it again and again and again. Right? I didn't start out with like uh, 300 people watching me the first time. It was painfully embarrassing. Right, but then you just keep doing it and doing it and you will get a following eventually. Or right, you just gotta kinda stay there. Thank you. Alright. The last point. We are at the last point, guys. Anyone have any guess as to what the last point is? So we've taken the first step. And then it's about taking the next step and then the next step and tweaking it as you take your steps. What's the last point? Keep going. Be consistent. You're right, kind of right. Well, I phrased it as a bit more simplistically. There are many steps, right? But I think for me, it was, it, it is consistency, um, but it, it was also about knowing that it is a long game. I think that realization for me was quite important, as simple as it sounds. Because when you first start, right, and you keep going, let's say you see some success. For example, on live stream, you suddenly get like from two followers or two people watching you when you go live to 20, to 50, to maybe 100, 200, 300. And then you're like, uh, where am I going with this? For content, it's even more frustrating because you start out doing content and you put out this video, like I do fashion, right? And then you do something on sports and do something on travel, which are my three loves, right? But then after that, you're like, uh, where is this going, right? So I think knowing that it is a long game, even if you don't know what the game is, is actually really, really important. So I'm gonna end off by just sharing with you the three points that I feel have helped me with the long game and hopefully they will help you as well. So this is from my positive psychology training, right? We focus a lot on strengths, and I cannot stress this enough, right? So if you use your strengths in your everyday life, and if you incorporate it into the job that you choose, the way you craft your career is when you are gonna not only see probably the most success, 
but also feel the most fulfilled. So this was when I was five years old, right? Which is maybe 10 years ago, no, kidding. This is my five years, five years old doing a keynote for my kindergarten one class, right? And I realized that oh, I actually like being on stage. It didn't scare me, I mean, it scared me a little bit, but it was more exciting than it was scary. And this is me terrorizing my cousins because I thought I was the, some journalist. I would, at any opportunity when we were karaoke any 80s kids, karaoke was such a thing, yeah? So karaoke, I would take the mic and like, hey, what do you think about this song? So irritating, but that was kind of when I figured this is what I like doing and probably what I would end up doing, even though I didn't have a concrete plan as to how to get there. The other thing is to align yourself with the right people. So Mothership at that point had, I don't know how many followers they have right now, but this was 2018. They had over 250 followers. And in my head, I wanted to set up this lifestyle arm of Mothership, right? They also wanted to set up a lifestyle arm and I called it Della. And we kind of joined forces together. And honestly, I was no one. I had like, I mean, Della had no followers, but it was an easy way and a quick way to grow. And yeah, we hit over a million views. But it was also because I think part of that was we had some creative differences where they wanted, I think they do more tongue in cheek stuff, a little bit more political. Whereas my style is a bit more, you know, lifestyle, a bit more like, here's how we can help to improve your life, make your life better. And I like to do personality interviews. So that I think that's where we kind of had that creative friction. But it's knowing what you're good at and also aligning yourself and finding that good balance that really helped me. Second thing is to connect. So I think just now when I asked, almost everybody, I think everybody in fact has social media of some form, right? But the year is 2024, right? I think as of maybe five years ago, you could still get away with wearing a pretty dress, taking a nice picture, I'm sitting at a cafe, that's so cool, I want your life. It's not really gonna cut it anymore. People want to connect, they want to engage, they want to be part of a community. So there are many channels, and here's where also I encourage you guys to think about your strengths, what you're good at. Are you good at, are you better at um, text, as in words? Are you good on video? Are you better in real life? So these are the few that you may want to consider. So they're Instagram channels. Now this is not just having a page. Right? On Instagram now you can actually have a broadcast channel on your page, where it's a little bit more one way, where you can put up um, topics to your followers, but it could be very specific. For example, like my own account, I have sports, I have fashion, I have fitness, I have a bit of food, a bit of, a bit of travel, but maybe I would set up a channel just for hiking. Because a lot of people ask me a lot of questions about hiking. Or I may set up a channel just for like maybe speaking or getting into the MC world, or getting into the modeling world. So then you kind of split it like that. And similar for WhatsApp, Telegram is great because there's no limit. Um, it's a bit more ball or west, right? But it depends on what suits your style. Facebook, for example, people ask me, why do I run my live streaming on Facebook? Well, that's where my customers are, right? It, it just happens to be the base. Um, and also because the infrastructure is the most set up for commerce, there are a lot of ways to automate the system on Facebook. Whereas unlike Instagram, not so. TikTok is coming up, but it's about knowing your audience as well. And of course, in real life meetups. I showed my husband this slide, he's like, what's IRL? I'm like, well, wow, you're very old there. So IRL, in real life, so some people, you know, it takes more time because you're not going to meet as many people. But I can tell you, in real life meetups, really you're going to forge a connection real quick, right? Because the connections are a lot stronger, and it's also the reason why artists come to Singapore to give concerts. Last night, a friend invited me to watch Nal Horan. Anyone have any idea who that is? Yes, thank you. I'm not the only. I was just telling her I felt very old. It's a he was an ex One Directioner, right? So there were a lot of teenage girls. Um, but I think. For people like him, this is really the way to build a base. Because after the concert this morning, all I was listening to was now Haran's songs. It works, right? So you build this sort of connection in real life. And, and think about it, you may want to do meetups with your friends, your colleagues, your followers. I think insurance agents actually do this really, really well. The good ones are doing it increasingly well, right? So something to learn. Finally, it's about finding your niche and dominating it. And this is the part where I think a lot of people struggle. Right, so two words, anyone, quick one, P word and T word, what do you think we need to find and dominate a niche? Passion, passion. Whoa, I didn't think of that, that is good, but I realize passion doesn't always stay the distance, and that's the clue. Purpose, also true, but it's a lot less sexy than passion and purpose, unfortunately. Persistence. Persistence, persistence, it's really unsexy, but it's true. And what's the T word? Connected. 
Tenacity, who said tenacity? Thank you, Woo. thank you. Round of applause. <laughs> All right, these are the unsexy ones, but it is true. All right, so this is the niche, right? I'll just give you the example of myself. So if you see, it's quite interesting. Straight Sun says, a lucrative trade for some, right? Because it depends on how you run your business. And then the second one, there is a lack of talent. There really is, all right? This is still a very um, open market, I feel, in Singapore. There's still a lot of space for a lot of people. But the problem is a lot of people switch on the camera and they see four people watching and then they do it for three days and then like, I cannot, I cannot. And I know this because I recruit live streamers and I encourage them to stay and after a month, some of them not bad, they last a month, they, they leave or they just give up because they're like, no one's watching me. I can tell you coming from TV when I'm used to thousands of people watching, the first time I switched on, I had maybe 15 people of which was my mother, my husband, my best friend who called a few other people and said, can you please support? And my father, because my mom said we need more devices to be watching this. Right, so I mean, also that, right, getting your friends to support you so you don't feel so crappy about yourself. But it really is about going the distance and staying there. Okay, let me give you an example of tenacity and knowing your strengths at work. Okay, so these are like colleagues from the media scene. Ponsa Michelle, and these are like a celebrity hairstylist, for those who don't know. And they started this business. When they started, right, they honed all the three of their strengths. And all three have different sort of followings and fan followings, so they had that as well. But the, it, that wasn't, everybody thinks, oh, because they're famous. It's not that. They did it every day. When I asked Michelle, I said, every day? You do it every day? She said, I do it every day. I said, so you do it like for what, like an hour? Or, no. She did, she, they, when they started, they did it for a minimum of eight hours a day. Eight hours? Yeah, so it really is hard for. All right, it's not just because they're famous, they did it for like eight hours a day and I was like, how do you pee? How do you eat? She's like, oh, because it's quite casual, then we just take turns, right? Or like, you know, she said, you must change your mindset. Because I was used to doing client live streams, they hired me for an hour, two hours max, and I was like, oh shit. I was like, eight hours? Now the longest live stream I've done is also eight hours. I mean, you get used to it, right? You really do get used to it. A word on tenacity. So they reached a sort of success, which was great for them. And this is not to throw shade, I'm just using this as an example. What happened was, they didn't expect to see that sort of success, and I think what they didn't handle was the back end. Right, so when you have that much orders coming in, it's a happy problem for all salespeople, but you've got to know who's doing the fulfillment. And so that's the part that um, I think they needed a bit more help with that. And of course, you, were, you get obstacles along the way when you live stream, um, just some examples. Like, you may live stream things that are illegal, you have no idea, people complain about you, you may fight with your co-founder, it may become very public, and all this will hurt your company. Right? So we didn't have the same success as Mdada did in the first two months, to like boom like that. But what we did was to stay the distance. So we tried to learn from these. We set up a proper customer service team. We used to use smaller uh, freight forwarders, but then we started using the more expensive international ones because they were reliable. And it kind of works because customers, I don't know if that's too small, um, a bit low on transport here, but basically they're very happy with the streams, they said they're happy to shop with us, they're very satisfied with the customer service, they'll definitely shop with us again, it's been a very pleasant experience. Right, so for us, customers come first, even at the risk of us um, spending a bit more cash. And so I think the point is just to understand you will have failures, you will have rejections, you will have nobody watching you when you first switch on the camera, and that is normal. It's not only okay, it's normal. Right, but you just have to keep at it because people have to understand that oh, this person is on at this time every day, right? And then they will start to follow. Hopefully, when I do an overseas trip, I stream every single night. When I'm back in Singapore, a bit more chill, right? But like I just came from a two and a half week in Europe. I did it every night, and the Italians are like, oh, "When is your off day?" I'm like, "There is no off day." They probably think, "What's wrong with your Asians?" Right? But for me, then we build a community for the two weeks, and they actually tell me, "Oh, gee, I'm so sad. You're going back to Singapore." Right, because we start to hang out every night and that's really about building the community again as well. So this is just some um, hate comments you will get. You guys got to learn how to manage. I see some of this hurt a little bit. I was like, Julia has aged so much. Really? Since I was 25? You know, but then you have to kind of roll with it. And I realized I am 41 and this is my 40th birthday because I had a 40. Visually it felt better, but I'm actually 41 this year. So I have aged. It is normal, right? And I think the point is you have to kind of roll with it, right? Yeah, I mean, I have to understand that I'm not 25 anymore, even though my soul may be. Looks wise, it may not be, but you move on, right? And you find your niche in other ways, 
I'm not sure a 25 year old would speak to my customer base, which are more people my age, uh, as well as I can as well. So I think it's really about embracing that. So you self affirm, tell yourself it's okay, you fight back in other ways. And really to me, if you only take back one message, tenacity is everything. Keep going, keep it regular. And remember that even our favorite fried chicken guy was rejected a thousand and nine times. I, I, I couldn't believe that and I was like, is that, is that real? And KFC is still surviving today, okay guys? So I think that's uh, something to learn from. I hope you guys enjoy this. I hope you'll take back something from the top. I'll be around. If you want to ask any questions, I don't know if we have time. I guess we don't. Uh, the organizers might kill me, but I'll be around if you want to ask me questions off stage. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Jess. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So much wisdom in your amazing 41-year-old brain. Thank you.